Hello and welcome to episode 9 of Construction Rocks. Now today is going to be a very special day because we are about to discuss what I promised you six months ago. Flashback. On this episode we'll just focus on this green common rafter. But we'll get to the others in another episode. That is right. We are about to discuss how to mark hip and valley rafters with a speed square. Now before we go marking hip and valley rafters, we need to understand the concept behind them. Now if you remember from our first episode, I had talked about common rafters. Hip and valley rafters are also rafters, but they are made differently because they play special roles in the building of a roof. So how are they different from common rafters? Well, a hip rafter forms a triangle on the roof by connecting two corners of a house to a ridge, forming a hill shape. A valley rafter forms a triangle like the hip rafter, but is also connected to a second roof that runs 90 degrees from the first roof, forming a valley when the two roofs intersect. So one big difference is that the common rafters form a 90 degree angle with the wall plates and hip and valley roofs form 45 degree angles with the wall plate. Now let's review some facts from episode one. Now, remember that the pitch of a common rafter is always expressed as some number over 12. This ratio refers to the ratio of rise over run. In this particular common rafter, we have a rise or height of 10 inches to a run length of 12 inches. And the pitch of this rafter is thus 10 over 12. So for every 12 inches of run length, the rafter rises 10 inches in height. Referring to the plan view, remember we can now determine the amount of board length needed to make our common rafter shown in green. We see that the run length of the bottom member of the common rafter is 4 units of 12 inches, or 48 inches, or 4 feet. The height or rise of the rafter is 4 times 10 inches, or 40 inches. So using the Pythagorean theorem, the length of the sloped member works out to be 62 and a half inches. Okay, you already know that. Now let's look at the hip and valley rafters. One big difference is that the pitch of hip and valley rafters is always expressed as some number over 17, not 12. Now you might be asking yourselves, what? Why is the unit run for a hip and valley rafter 17 instead of 12? Well, hold on to that question, grasshopper, while I point something out. Now for this particular rafter right here, we have a rise or height of 10 inches to a run length of 17 inches. The pitch of this rafter is thus 10 over 17. So for every 17 inches of run length, the rafter rises 10 inches in height. Okay, back to the $100 question. Why is the unit run for a hip and valley rafter 17 instead of 12? You will notice in this plan view that the 4 equal 12 inch units of run length for the common rafter correspond to 4 equal units of run length for the hip rafter. You will also notice that these hip rafter units of run are longer than their 12 inch counterpart. Let's look at a close up of this area to figure out the exact length of the unit run length for the hip rafter. So look at this picture, this is just a close up view. Using the Pythagorean theorem, 12 squared plus 12 squared equals 16.97 squared. So rounding 16.97, we get 17 for our hip unit run. And using that information, we can determine the length of board needed to make our hip rafter shown in red. We see that the run length of the bottom member of the hip rafter is 4 units at 17 inches, or 68 inches. The height or rise of the rafter is 4 times 10 inches, or 40 inches, just like our common rafter. So using the Pythagorean theorem, the length of the sloped member works out to be 78 and 3 quarter inches. This proves that hip and valley rafters are longer than common rafters. Because remember, the common rafter was only 62 and a half inches. Wow, that was a lot to take in. But not to fear, because it only gets better from here on out. To be continued.